Hi there, my name is Danielle Ariola, or Miss Danny, and I'm a Girl Scout San Diego Outreach Program Leader. I'm super excited that you were able to join me today for my Daisy Tips and Tricks video. So let's start off with who is a Daisy Girl Scout? So a Daisy Girl Scout is a girl who is five years of age or older. She can either be in TK, kindergarten, or first grade to be a Daisy Girl Scout. I want to thank you for joining me today with my Daisy Tips and Tricks video. I'm excited to have you here and I hope that after you've watched this video you feel a little bit more confident and ready to take on a virtual troop. So let's jump into the video with first going over a few needs of a Daisy Girl Scout. So the first need of a Daisy Girl Scout are opportunities to discover, create, learn, and explore. So girls at this age love learning new things. You'll definitely hear lots of oohs and ahs when you're working with this age group, so it can be a lot of fun. It's also really important for girls of this age to create things that they can be proud of. That's why we really focus on lots of crafts and hands-on activity. Often give them lots of coloring sheets to do. But one little tip for you is maybe to let them know that it's to their benefit to take their time when coloring a craft or even creating a craft because oftentimes the girls will rush through when they're doing coloring sheets that they will just scribble all over the page. So what you can do as a leader is just let them know, hey girls, we have about 10 minutes to do your coloring sheet so I don't want you to rush. You can take your time because you're only going to get one of these supplies. So let them know that it's to their benefit to take their time so that way they're not sitting there with their paper already finished and their hands like this looking around saying, what are we going to do next? So the next need of a Daisy Girl Scout is things that are going to help build her motor skill development. So activities such as singing songs, clapping their hands, cutting out shapes um, with safety scissors, maybe even ripping and tearing paper, tracing shapes onto another piece of paper, building puzzles, or playing with blocks. All these types of things are really going to help stimulate their motor skill development. Another thing that will really help build their motor skill development are games that include lots of running, clapping, singing, and moving their bodies, getting their bodies into action. So one example of an awesome and really fun game that the girls can play to help build up those motor skills is Girl Scout Says, which is essentially Simon Says, but instead of saying Simon, you say Girl Scout Says. It's super fun and it also translates really well into the virtual setting as well as an in-person Girl Scout meeting. So the next need of a Daisy Girl Scout is lots of positive reinforcement. The girls will constantly be looking to you as the leader and the adult in the setting for reassurance and approval. You may notice this when they're singing songs, doing crafts, or even learning a new game. They're going to be constantly looking over to you as the leader to make sure that they're doing it right. So a simple smile, a head nod, two thumbs up, letting them know that they're doing great will really help boost their confidence and make them feel better at what they're doing. So what I like to do when giving feedback is pointing out something specific that they did. So if let's say that a girl brought me her craft and she's super excited to show it to me, I can either say, oh my gosh, that looks awesome. I love your craft, right? Which will still make her feel good, but it might not be as special and specific to her as she might like. So you can say, oh my gosh, I love your craft. I love the way you used pink and blue. Those are two of my favorite colors. I love the little party hat you added and the sun. It looks awesome. So that way you're pointing out something specific to her craft. Oh, positive reinforcement can really help you out in a lot of situations. Let's say a girl accidentally got out when you're playing a game. You can tell her that's okay and you can even use this as a great time to engage all of your girls and you can tell the girls, hey, can, can everybody say that's okay and that way that girl leaves the game not feeling down about herself. Using positive reinforcement can also be awesome if you as an adult make a mistake because the girls really look up to, to us as leaders so it's really important to let them know hey even though we're adults we make mistakes too so one fun way to engage your entire group if let's say maybe you were singing a song and you messed up or maybe you forgot to start off with promise and song and you jumped right into discussion so you can have all the girls chime in and say oh miss Danny and that's a really great way to let them know that even though we're adults we mess up too the next need of a Daisy Girl Scout is age-appropriate independence. So you'll definitely see this a lot with girls of this age. They can be very headstrong or they can be very shy. So you just have to gauge your audience and see who you're working with. So something I love to do is, is to encourage the girls to try things on their own before asking me for help. I'll tell her, hey, I bet you can do this if you try. Why don't you go ahead and try it on your own first and I can help you from there if you really need it. And a lot of times they're pleasantly surprised that they were able to do something all by themselves without any help. So I always encourage them to try things on their own because they're pretty capable. They just need that extra little push or that boost of confidence. A good way to segue into making sure that activities are girl-led, say for example, 
a girl named Sally is struggling with her craft. But instead of you jumping in and helping her, you can actually take another Girl Scout student um, or a Girl Scout sister and have her help instead. So that way it's girl led and the girls are teaching each other and learning from each other and you're just there to facilitate it. So what I like to do is either encourage Sally to ask Michaela, who's already finished with her craft, you can say, hey Sally, I see that you need a little bit of help with your craft, but I think Michaela knows how to do it because she already finished. Do you want to go ask her if she can be a good Girl Scout sister and help you out? And more times often than not, the other Girl Scout sister is more than willing to help her Girl Scout sister who's struggling and needs a little bit of help. Let's say, for example, Sally was too shy to ask Michaela. What you can do is walk over to Michaela or even suggest in the virtual setting and say, Hey, Michaela, I see that you're finished with your craft and it looks awesome. Could you be a, girl, a good Girl Scout sister and help Sally out with her craft? So that way you're encouraging the girls to stay independent, but also learn from each other. The next need of a Daisy Girl Scout is friendly competition. So Daisies love friendly competition, whether they're competing for a prize or simply competing for praise from their peers and their leaders. However, keep in mind that incentives can really help motivate a group, even if it's just for stickers on a chart or stickers on the back of their hand if you're in person, incentives can really help motivate the girls. For example, let's say you're in an in-person meeting and you're splitting the girls up into different groups, maybe assigning them to different tables or it's sitting in a circle and you're gonna pass out a craft. What you can do is tell them, okay girls, whoever goes to sit down the fastest, the quietest, has their hands in their laps and they're not talking and they're letting me know that they're ready for the next activity, will get their craft supplies first or maybe they can get a chance to get started on their craft first, things like that. So just little incentives like that can really motivate the girls to do better and to be on their best behavior. And adding that little element of friendly competition can really help you with group management. In the virtual world, a fun game that we've been playing to encourage a little bit of friendly competition is Hangman. Almost everybody knows how to play Hangman and even if they don't, it's super easy to learn. And this gives the girls all a chance to raise their hand and guess a letter, but you still have that element of friendly competition because whoever guesses the phrase first gets the sticker on the star chart, or wins a prize or however you want to model it. So the next need for a Daisy Girl Scout are visuals and auditory and sensory aspects of program delivery. So visuals are an excellent tool when working with Girl Scouts of any age, but especially at the Daisy age level. They love brightly colored images, posters, glitter. Trust me, they love glitter. Nothing is too glittery or too colorful for a daisy, so don't be shy when you're creating visual aids or posters to show your girls. Auditory aspects can also be very helpful and enriching when delivering program. The girls love hearing music, they love hearing nature and animal sounds, they like hearing the noises that different instruments make, or even better, if you're able to, um, showing them the sounds that instruments make live. So for example, I have a pair of bongo drums, so I could always whip those out if I was delivering a program about music and demonstrate what it's like to play bongo drums. Maybe you have a guitar or a harmonica or any other musical instrument that you could actually demo live for them. So any props that you have at home that you can actually integrate into program delivery is gonna be awesome, especially since we are now in a virtual setting. It's also a really good strategy to get their other senses involved, such as taste, smell, touch, but I know that can be a little bit challenging when working in a virtual setting, so what you can do is ask questions engaging the rest of their senses. For example, let's say you're reading a book about a bakery, you can flip a page and ask the girls, so what do you think it smells like inside of this bakery? And then they can all answer, or if you're showing them a picture of, of a pink cake, you can ask, what do you girls think this pink cake tastes like? What flavor do you think it is? Etc. Etc. On another hand, maybe you're reading a book about the beach, you can ask the girls, so what do you think the weather is like here at the beach? And they can answer warm, sunny, hot, then you can ask them, perfect, so how do you think you would dress for a beach day? What types of things would you need for a beach day? And they can either answer sunscreen, a hat, shorts, a t-shirt, all those types of things. That way, even though you can't directly engage all of their senses with live props, you can ask them a few questions to kind of get the creative juices going and have them thinking, hmm, what would I dress like for a hot day? Or yeah, my skin can burn in the sun, maybe I would need some sunscreen. Little things like that. So now that we went over some of the needs of a Daisy Girl Scout, let's jump into their wants. So the first want of a Daisy Girl Scout is going to be attention, whether it's positive or negative, from their leaders and their peers. 
the girls are definitely going to be looking for attention from you as the leader or from their peers. They're looking for reaction, especially if they're lacking that attention from loved ones at home. So try your best to let them have fun, but also encourage them to still be on their best behavior and to stay on task if you notice the silliness is kind of getting in the way of progress. Something that you're going to notice happening a lot is the girls might get distracted, um, especially because they're in their own homes, they're in their rooms or they're in their living rooms. They have a bunch of cool toys around them and they feel really comfortable being at home. It's really important that once you're going over the rules and setting the tone for your virtual meeting to let the girls know that, hey, I know that you're at home, I know you're comfortable, I know there's a lot of distractions around, but it's really important that we all are respectful and that we treat this as a regular in-person Girl Scout meeting. So that means once you set up your camera or your phone or your tablet or laptop, whatever device they're using to join the meeting, make sure you let them know, please don't touch it now that we've started Girl Scouts and I need you all to be sitting nice and tall and on your best behavior with no distractions. So it's really important to set that tone from the beginning because the girls can easily get distracted at their own homes. If you find a girl misbehaving, try and address the situation, but if it becomes too much of an issue or distraction, don't stop program repeatedly to focus on one girl. Sometimes you just have to kind of move on from the situation, and other times if you don't give them the reaction that they're looking for, they might just stop. So try your best to call out the situation and handle it, but don't spend too much time because in person and especially in the virtual settings, we don't have that much time for program. So it's really important not to let little obstacles kind of stop you or, you know, let it be the mud that stops the momentum. So the next want of a Daisy Girl Scout is to be a helper or an assistant. Girls love helping out in any way they can and it can also make your life a lot easier. So let's say, for example, you're delivering program about birds and you have a big old bird poster, right? But you want the girls to be focused on what you're saying and not with what you're holding. So you can ask one of the girls, you can say, hey, who wants to be my helper? And pick the first hand that you see. She can come up and hold the poster. And it makes your life a little bit easier and also makes her feel really special because she's helping out deliver program. So afterwards, you can thank her for participating, give her a sticker, and send her on her way to sit back with the rest of the group. Another way that you can have the girls help you out um, is maybe asking them to pass out clean paper to the whole group, pass out different art supplies, and things like that. Having the girls be your helper is also an awesome time to engage a girl who is maybe having a bad day, who maybe doesn't want to really participate in program, maybe she's crying, so this is a great way to kind of distract her from whatever she's going through and have her participate in program, because we don't want any Girl Scouts being left out or feeling like they're not part of the group. If you're the only leader, you can definitely pull the girl aside and quickly try and console her, but what you don't want to do is spend too much time with the crying girl because what can happen is you can distract the rest of the girls from program. So just keep an eye on that. A lot of times when you pull a girl aside, the rest of them will all turn their heads to look or watch. That's why it's awesome to have a co-leader who can kind of reel them back in and say, hey girls, our eyes are up here, let's focus on our task or whatever. But what you can do is, you know, sometimes you're going to have a girl who's super inconsolable. What you can do is try and distract her. So you can ask her, hey, do you want to be my helper? I would love it if you help me pass out stickers and you can be right up at the front with me. You don't have to go sit back down. So that way she's kind of distracted from what upset her. And eventually, usually the girl um, will stop crying and be happier and ready to jump back into program. So letting the girls be a helper and assistant is an awesome way to get them involved. But also it's an awesome tactic for you if you have a girl who's upset or maybe not having the best day. It's going to help brighten up her day to be your helper and it's also going to make program go a lot more smoothly. So another need of Daisy Girl Scouts is to talk, share stories, and ask questions. So keep in mind that patience is key, especially because a lot of these girls are still learning what a question is. So oftentimes you'll open up discussion for questions and they will start to share personal anecdotes, or make comments or things like that, which is fine, you know? The girls need an opportunity to share and have their voice heard, but one thing I would like for you to keep in mind is once one girl starts sharing, they're all gonna wanna share. Usually, if you notice this pattern, so one girl raises her hand and starts sharing when you ask for questions, and you say, okay, well, thank you so much for sharing, then you go on to the next girl, and maybe she also doesn't understand what a question is, so she starts sharing personal stories, which is fine because oftentimes they relate to the material that you're going over, but a lot of times they can just be totally off the wall and unrelated to the program, 
and the sharing although it's awesome and really cool to see what they have to say it can definitely take away from the program delivery time which is taking away from their educational experience so what I like to do is just redirect the conversation so I'll tell them thank you so much for sharing girls does anybody have a question not a statement but a question and I will thank the girls for sharing and telling them oh I know everybody wants to share and I'll give your girls a couple minutes to do that once program is finished but right now we have to move on to our next activity so letting them know oh I know that I'm stopping you short but letting them know why you're stopping them short redirecting but letting them know why you kind of shut down the conversation the next need of a DZ Girl Scout is to play games you will not believe how excited they get when you ask who wants to play a game or who's ready to play a game. This is an awesome way to kind of hype up your group um, and keep them excited. So I recommend to try your best to keep your discussion aspect of program kind of short and sweet. Get to the meat and the potatoes of the discussion but don't spend too much time on appetizers or, or side dishes because the girls don't have the longest attention span or in this case the biggest appetite. So you have to make sure that you keep your discussion aspect kind of short and sweet and get to the good stuff and then move on to a game or an activity because otherwise you can really easily overload them with too much information. Children of this age range need a constant jump from activity to activity to kind of keep their attention span focused and that's okay so make sure to plan a variety of fun games for the girls. Be really clear about the rules of the game if you can. Give them a live demonstration of maybe different parts of the game and then always ask if anybody has any questions or needs anything clarified and even though the girls are still learning what a question is if they do have a real question they'll definitely ask it so another need of a Daisy Girl Scout is to sing songs the girls absolutely go nuts for Girl Scout songs they love them they get super excited and this is a really fun time to interact with the girls so keep in mind that the sillier the better the more tone inflection you put on your voice, the more movements you have, the more you're smiling or making silly faces, the girls are really going to feed off of that energy. And it's amazing the way that they will mimic your expressions to a T. So one time I was singing a song and I kind of wrinkled my nose when I was singing it and I saw my, my whole group of kindergartners doing the exact same thing that I did. Even if I moved my eyes like this or if I kind of squinted or something, they did all of the same thing. So just keep that in mind. They will mimic everything you do, so make it even more fun and exciting. Another thing I've noticed about songs is that they can work to your benefit as a leader. So let's say you have a particularly rowdy and energetic group of Daisy Girl Scouts, you know, and you know this, and you know that it's kind of hard to keep their attention during discussion. What I like to do is sing a really long song that has lots of movements, or if you have the time to allow, maybe even singing two songs and making sure they have plenty of movements and you're changing your tone inflection, that way you can kind of tire out your group. You know, they express some energy and now they're ready to kind of sit quietly for at least 10 minutes of program delivery and then you can jump into a game or an activity after that. So now that we've gone over the needs and the wants of a Daisy Girl Scout, let's hop into some group management tips for working with the daisies. So one thing to keep in mind when working with Daisy Girl Scouts is that repetition is essential. So you may have to repeat yourself multiple times and that's okay. That's why it's always important to have the girls repeat words back as they learn them, repeat rules, and so on and so forth. Just be patient and remember that they might not get it on the first try or even throughout the whole program. It might not always click with them, but your goal is to get them as close to understanding the topic as possible. Keep in mind that many of these girls are still developing. We like to call them developing daisies. But sometimes they're just really, really little, especially the girls who are in TK compared to your first grader. You know, there's going to be some developmental differences, but that's okay. Just be patient and repeat yourself as many times as you need to. So my next helpful group management strategy is to give clear step-by-step -step instructions for all games, experiments, activities, and crafts. It's going to be the easiest for the girl and for yourself to have them follow along step-by-step -step versus handing them an instruction sheet. Even if it has pictures, a lot of them don't know how to read yet. They're still developing and learning how to read. So it's going to be really important for you to go step-by-step -step for any craft or activity. If you can give a demo, that's always going to help out the best. So for example, if you're playing a game, you can show them what not to do or what to do during the game. So a live demo is really going to help them out. Also, always make sure your instructions for a game or experiment or any craft are simple, clear, and specific. And make sure to follow up with the girls and see if anybody has questions. So the next helpful group management strategy for you is...
have girls repeat rules, directions, or sayings after they are said. So for example, if you're going over the list of rules that you have for your first Girl Scouts meeting or even just going over rules again on the second or third meeting for the new girls who join, you can have the girls follow along with you and say, okay girls, so we're going to say rule number one, show me rule number one. And then go over rule number one and ask them, so what rule was that? And they can say, that was rule number one. And then say, great. Now let's go over rule number two. Can everybody show me rule number two? So another help, helpful strategy is to continuously give positive reinforcement throughout your entire program delivery. So just make sure you're still giving lots of thumbs up, nodding your head, telling the girls they're doing an awesome job, using their name as much as possible, and just being specific. I know we talked about this earlier, but being very specific to their craft, pointing out the colors they used or the shapes or anything that's gonna set their paper apart from their other Girl Scout sisters. Being very specific and always giving that positive reinforcement. Once again, using those that's okays or no big deal or better luck next time, letting them know it's okay to mess up if they do so. Another helpful trick is gonna be moving around the space as you're presenting, so if you're delivering so if you're delivering program and you're working on the discussion aspect of it, moving from side to side around your audience and maybe walking through them just to kind of keep their, keep their engagement. But I know it can be a little bit more difficult in a virtual setting. So what's really gonna help is over-exaggerating on your screen since we aren't in an in-person setting and you can't really move around the room. Make sure that you're over-exaggerating and making lots of cool faces, thumbs up, big frowny faces if you need to, just really over exaggerating and moving around the screen, using lots of hand mov movements and motions and stuff like that will really keep the girls engaged. You can also make sure to use specialized claps as we spoke about earlier, which I'm sure you have learned from our attention getter videos. Another helpful group management strategy is when you're delivering in-person program, make sure all leaders and volunteers spread around the room. So if you are having the girls do a coloring session, it's better just to have all leaders kind of spread around, walk the room, check in with the girls, see how they're doing, remind them of any rules and stuff like that. I know it can be a little bit different here in the virtual setting, so it's really important to plan with your partner, co-leader, or any volunteers who is doing what. So you'll have your basic program, and then you can, from there, make an outline and assign different tasks to different people. So for example, when my partner and I were doing a craft for our anger program, she already had a craft all ready to go to show the girls. And what I did was I just followed along and had all the same um, supplies as them. So a piece of paper, a piece of paper to rip up, and I followed along. So I could show them as I was working, okay, I did step one, go ahead girls, yours should look similar to this, but different since everybody has different creative strategies but it was really helpful that she was leading the craft and already had an example and I could follow along and show them in real time what they should be doing. So just planning out your program. I know it's kind of hard to spread out as you can't really do that in a virtual setting, but it's gonna be really helpful to know who's doing what so you can kind of flow smoothly and you can be prepared to answer questions or anything like that. So my final group management strategy for you is to use simple vocabulary and explain new words as they are being used. So it's really important to ask girls if they understand a big or a new word. So let's say we're talking about cooperation and I'll tell the girls this is a really big word. Cooperation, has anybody ever heard it before? They can raise their hands and say yes. And I'll say, awesome. So who wants to explain to me what cooperation means? Does anybody know? And that's a good way to gauge your audience and see how much they really know. Maybe one girl saying part of the phrase is gonna spark another girl to say, oh wait, I do know what that means. And she'll raise her hand and share. So it's awesome to give them an opportunity to let program be girl led. So I don't wanna give them the answer and tell them what cooperation means. I would rather a girl who already understands it, you know, explain to the group. But in the case that they don't know what the word means, you can always tell them that's okay, I'll explain it to you. And then always check in while you're explaining new things and say, does that make sense? Does everybody kind of get it? Thumbs up if you understand. And always remember to do a review session over any new information that was taught to the girl. Or if you taught them any new big words, just say, hey, who remembers what that big word I taught you was? And maybe if you don't want to say the word, or if they don't really remember, you can give them little hints by saying, it started with a C, it maybe sounds like this word, or it rhymes with that. So little things like that. Always relating things to what they already know and giving them hints. So you don't want to give them all the answers, but you definitely want to lead them close, as close as you can. So that concludes my Daisy's Tips and Tricks video. I want to just thank you for being here with me today. 
Once again, my name is Danielle Ariola. I work for Girl Scouts San Diego, and I'm very happy to have had you here. I hope you feel a little bit more confident and ready to take on your virtual troop meetings. If you have any further questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you.